Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, we're going to go over the difference that five levels can make for your characters, for a team, um, just so you can get an idea of how much stronger you're actually getting if you've never actually looked at a side-by-side -side comparison of, let's say, level 65 characters versus level 70, as well as show what stats you gain even before you go to the stat stream. We're also going to look at the stat stream itself, so that we can kind of prepare for the future and look at what we're going to be needing because it is getting more and more expensive and it is something you're going to want to plan for for the level 75 uncap that comes up i would say in probably about another four or five weeks and then last we're going to go through the events and i'm going to just kind of tidy up some things that i think everybody should know since we only have about a week left of these and ask anybody if they're still having any struggles. If they are, I will be willing to make some content to show you how to get through it. We'll tackle that at the end. All right, so the first thing I wanna show here is just a copy of one of my teams, and I'm using the team I used for Mithromine. Uh, we all know how much of a struggle that was and continues to be. But anyway, I'm gonna use uh, my damage dealers here because Aerith, I have not gone through her uh, stat stream yet, but this was what they looked like at level 65 uh, with my stat streams more or less max there's a few things that i don't go into all the time like for example i'm not gonna unnecessarily uh, get heal on sephiroth unless it's leading to a limit break or something like that but this is what it looked like and if we go into sephiroth's individual loadout you can see what it looks like here this is the sephiroth that i was using right here on the very left and these were the stats that i had all right, this one in the middle here is what happens after I took Sephiroth from level 65 to 70 without doing any of the stat stream. So you can see that, you know, we gained about 177 HP, um, you know, 20 attack, give or take, and maybe 12 magic attack. Uh, the physical and magical defense don't change, and the heal went up about 8 points, which is not very much, but this is just getting the levels, so... You know, you can imagine we started at level 50 to level 70. If you multiply this by four, I mean, you're still getting probably about 500 HP and about 100 attack, etc. Just from getting the levels. Now we go into the stat stream and we can see here, this is where, you know, the magic really happens. Um, where our HP goes from, you know, 78, 89 to 8,500. So not quite 700, like 640. 40 something 630 um pretty good pretty good chunk of hp but the physical attack and magical attack not really as much as we'd like to think if we if we kind of you know forget about this one and zoom in over here you can see that i only got about an extra 51 physical attack after updating the stat stream and magic attack um we're looking at like 33 so, you know, I mean, not that big of a deal. The biggest difference was in HP, which does help, especially, like I said, if you think about it from level 50 to level 70, and now you have 2,400 more HP, which is a big deal. So really, this is something that kind of incrementally adds up, but again, is why I kind of tell people that, you know, it might be the difference maker if you're close to beating content, but it is not going to make your team magically much, much stronger. Weapons and stuff like that are more likely to make a big difference. And if we go over and look at Tifa real quickly from the exact same setup, you can see once again, this is my Tifa at level 65 in the setup. This is what she looked like when she hit level 70 with no stat stream. And then over here on the right is once I've upgraded all the stat stream for her. And again, you know, we're looking at like 500 and change HP, like almost 550 uh, physical attack. We're actually looking at quite a bit, um, almost 50 physical attack and magic attack, like 34. So I guess I'm saying here, you know, 50 physical attack seems like a lot. It's not that much, but it's something. But this is why to me, leveling your characters up although important is not going to make as big of a difference as o being your weapons because the weapons are going to have a much bigger ultimate impact especially on your damage dealing stats the leveling up mostly is going to help you with survivability because you are going to get these hp increases 
that, you know, over time, as you get, you know, 15 more levels, is going to start actually making a pretty big difference in your survivability. Just wanted to go through that so that everybody could kind of get a real look at how much these extra five levels really help and why I always tell people if there's not an XP boost campaign or something going on, that's not what I would necessarily be flocking to or trying to expedite any sort of process on uh, because it's not going to make the biggest difference unless you're in that real slim margin when it comes to completing some sort of content. And the last thing when it comes to growth and stat stream that I want to look at is just how much it's starting to take in order to kind of get these stat streams maxed out. So here I have Aerith who is hit level 70 as you can see here, uh, but I have not worked on her stat stream yet. So this is, you know, this is the level 72 unlock. This is what we've gotten, you know, since we unlocked or hit 70. Coming over here, we're starting to need a ton of these pieces. And that's why this event was really good because it was able to get us like thousands of them. You can see Healing Wind though, for example, that would be something I would definitely want to unlock. We're looking at 50 memories and then 360 of these. I'm going to go ahead and unlock that here just so you can kind of see how quickly they go through. I'm sure some of you have experienced this, but it's one of those things where one at a time, it doesn't seem like that much, but then it starts to kind of snowball quite fast. And the reason I say this is if you're not doing your dailies, if you're not uh, stockpiling those memories, this is going to eventually start to become quite a problem, I would say, because each one of these nodes are getting more and more expensive in order to unlock. And you can see that by the time I've done most of this, I don't even have enough memories to unlock the last of this. Now, I'm not too concerned with Aerith having physical attack, so I'll let this go for a while. But in the future, you are going to want to make sure you're doing those dailies. You're doing at least your main team on a regular basis. I would say you probably are going to want to have at least 200, maybe even 250 memories stockpiled on your main team prior to a level cap in order to make sure that you can get them uh, completely done. With that out of the way, I want to next go into the events, and I'm actually going to go into the crash event, the critical threat event, whatever you want to call it, and show something that, I'll be honest, normally I kind of sleep on. But this time around, I am really going to try to get. If we look at the victory draws, and unfortunately I can't show you past prize levels, which, I don't know, it's just kind of the way they designed it. But what I, what I really want to show is the next prize level on the bronze ticket. Because normally, I'll be honest, I already have these weapons. I probably wouldn't care too much if I get these, you know, OB-10 to OB-12. It doesn't really help me that much. However, if we look at level 6, character-specific weapon parts, and specifically Sephiroth character-specific weapon parts, very, very important. And the fact that you can get 35 of them is a really big deal, especially because I figure a lot of people use Sephiroth in their main team, or at least a version of their main team. These are hard to come by, and I would say that these character-specific weapon parts are arguably the best prize you can get in the game, next to maybe a you know five-star guaranteed ticket. But I think there's a really good argument to say that these are actually better. Yes, they don't give you quite as much bang right off the top, but the fact that you can use them towards literally any weapon, even limited, you know, time exclusive weapons like the FF9 ones to level those up, I mean, it makes these invaluable and is literally the number one way to guarantee strength gain in this game. And, you know, it's the same here. When you get to level six, you've got Lucia specific weapon parts and a lot of them, 50 to be exact. These are definitely things, I can't show you what level 6 looked like here, but I think there were more Sephiroth specific weapon parts, correct me if I'm wrong, but I basically just want to show everybody this because it is coming, you know, down to the end. We've got about 7 days between now and February 1st, so I know everybody likes to slack on the bronze tickets because they're just the bronze tickets, but this time around, they actually do offer something if you, you know, get them up, however... It does take a lot of draws to end up clearing through these, I can tell you that. The very last thing 
that I wanted to talk about is the Golden Bomb Rush event. I know early on there were some people saying that they were having a little bit of trouble uh, on the solo clearing some of these uh, stages. And I don't know if that's still the case, but if it is, drop me a message in the comments because if you are having trouble beating one of these stages, I will show you to the best of my ability how I would beat it. And um, just kind of give me an idea, maybe what you're working with. And I will try to make a video if you're still struggling with that. I just don't know since it's been a few days since I put that video out, if people are still struggling with that. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.